Alright, welcome back to the shop. Today's sort of an oddball project. I I typically like to use restore tools that are practical, but sometimes I like to dabble in the aesthetic. And in this particular case, these this was some sort of old block and tackle setup. I'm not sure if they were storing it like this or they had some sort of application, but but at best these would be load like I guess the load rating would be enough to maybe lift some hay bales or something like that something pretty light but anyway um, the, the wood on this sheave here you can see some cracks here and, and, and I'm not sure you can't really disassemble these rivets or anything this one this particular pulley is the one that I want to restore uh, but you know while I'm at it I might as well take a stab at cleaning these up too um, I think it'd be pretty neat. So uh, that's going to be today's project. Just something fun to goof around with. Uh, I can see some sort of a, I don't know if that's rust or some sort of name. We'll have to clean this up and then uh, and then come back and take a look at it. And uh, anyway, I think it'd be something sort of fun to tinker around with today. And um, yeah, I did spray it down with some WD-40 a day or two ago just to give it a chance to sort of break it loose. So let me try to disassemble this. It took the impact gun to get this nut off of here uh, and a little bit of heat, so it wasn't too bad though. There's a cotter key that's going to have to come out of here, and uh, we're just going to leave the, the wood one out of the equation right now and bring these over to the media blaster and get them cleaned up, and then bring you back and we'll disassemble this. At least get this cotter key out of here. Alright, so this went through the sandblaster and it was quite a bit trying to get the pin out. I, uh, the cotter pin was unable to come out in one piece, but that's alright, I have extras. Uh, the pin apparently has like a key or a notch in it to keep it from, from rotating, which is pretty interesting. I, I can't say that I've seen sort of a keyed pin like this, or axle, um, for this kind of application. You can see, because this is cast steel, it's extremely lightweight. This isn't made for heavy duty work or anything, so probably going to be a wall hanger. Uh, we don't have any hay bales or anything to lift, but you know, who knows? There could be some sort of application for it. But now that I have it cleaned up and I've got the pulley out, the pulley you can see that I missed a couple spots because of the way it was sort of locked up in here with the sand blaster, the media blaster. Uh, I'm going to bring it over there and, and get some of the spots that I missed before and clean it up and then. Um, and then paint it, I guess. Alright, so I've got the cage being painted out there. And when I was media blasting this, I noticed that there's some just horrible casting imperfections in there. If you can see that that ridge there, that's a half inch sticking up. Having some, some big casting problems here. So I'm just going to touch those up real quick with a piece of sandpaper. Alright, I'm not worried about making it perfect or anything, I just didn't want that giant piece sticking up. One of the ways that you can prevent rust on tools, or at least mitigate the, 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 the accumulation of rust on tools, is to polish the surface. I had thought about painting this, but if this ever did get used, and I'm thinking the application might be maybe a bird feeder or something where you could actually take it all to hemp twine or something to one of those thicker three quarter inch ropes and and use the compound pulley that's out there getting painted right now uh, you know throw it up in a tree and actually use this to raise and lower a, a bird feeder or something like that it'd be pretty neat and and this would be less susceptible to, to blowing around in the wind like everything else because it's actually got some mass to it 
But, so, so while this wouldn't be particularly load-bearing, uh, it would be out of the elements. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do here is I'm going to attempt to polish this hook. And when I polish the hook, then I can clear coat it, and then that should, that should do a pretty good job uh, keeping the rest away. So, so I'm going to, it's going to be a little bit hard to polish with this hook, but, uh, but anyway, I'm pretty confident I can do it, so let me get started on that. I was getting ready to paint this, but I figured I should show you before. Uh, I've got the hook polished up. That took a little bit of effort. Uh, there's some some pretty big inclusions in this thing. It's not 100% perfect, and, and it looks like this thing has actively worked for a while. There's some some pretty deep dents and dings and stuff in there. So uh, I didn't bother to clean this section up, you know, because it's going to get painted. So anyway, I'm just going to take this outside, give it a coat of paint, and I'll bring it back when I'm done. All right, so I've got this old lock and tackle set cleaned up. At least I've got the hook section down here cleaned up and this other pulley. I just pu pulled them apart, painted them, polished them. Nothing spectacular, but I figured, you know, I'd give a little demonstration here and talk about the difference between the mechanical advantages of ropes and pulleys and redirects. Uh, it's it's sort of a, an abstract concept to, to envision. However, in this particular instance, right now, if I was just lifting something up off my bench, I would have a two-to-one advantage. And that two-to-one advantage right now is just going to, if I apply one pound here, I'm going to get one pound here and one pound here, and it's going to lift these two pounds. However, if this was laid out on the ground, and this was a vehicle that you were trying to pull out, was affixed to this red one, and then this, this other one was hooked to a tree, Let's change the unit of analysis. If I had 100 pounds, if I was just pulling on it, I'd have 100 pounds pulling against this. I'd have 100 pounds pulling against this. Like one, two, three. I'd have 300 pounds. So depending on the orientation of these, depending on what object, what pulley you're trying to move, and what which one is fixed, you can either have the two to one advantage or the three to one advantage. And while this isn't necessarily the most articulate description you've ever heard of that. Uh, the, the interesting thing is that when you're out there in the field trying to do it, it's, it's helpful to look at your pulleys and make sure that, that you always have whatever force you're pulling, whatever part you're, you're imparting force into, whether it be just you pulling on it by hand or with a truck or something, you want to have it also pulling away from the load that you want moved. You want it, you, you want it moving towards the static load, towards the static end. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're taking this this hundred pounds and instead of using it to pull away from what you want moved you're simply redirecting it. You still got the hundred pounds here, your hundred pounds here, and hundred pounds here but now you only have two hundred pounds working towards moving your object and you've wasted this hundred pounds. However if you were to move the vehicle around or move your orientation you could take advantage of that additional force. So not not something you reckon to every day most of the time, but something to think about. So anyway, there is a difference between a redirect and uh, and the advantage that can be gained from from pulling against your load. So anyway, that's the little uh, farmer's pulley here, and I think this will probably be used for hoisting up a bird feeder or something like that. It's not going to do anything structural, that's for sure. And uh, anyway, just wanted to get this content out there. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and have a good day.